Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe in situ and ex situ methods of maintaining biodiversity. You should then be able to describe the roles of international and local conservation agreements. In the last video, we looked at the aesthetic, economic, and ecological reasons for maintaining biodiversity. Now, biodiversity is under threat from human activity, and this has led to many species becoming endangered. Endangered species are likely to become extinct in the near future. One way of helping to protect an endangered species is in situ conservation. In situ conservation takes place in the organism's natural habitat, for example, by creating a wildlife reserve. In a wildlife reserve, special measures are put in place to protect the organism. For example, human access may be restricted and hunting or poaching prohibited. If the numbers of a species fall very low in an area, then it might be reintroduced from populations living elsewhere. And in the case of animal species, they may be provided with food. Any species which is not native to the area, in other words an invasive species, may be removed to prevent competition with the protected species. This is especially important in the case of protected plants, which can easily be outcompeted. Now if land is left in the UK, then over time this will naturally revert to woodland. This process is called succession, and we look at succession in a later topic. Now, this is a problem for a number of habitats, including moorland and heathland. So to protect these habitats, grazing organisms such as deer can be introduced. These graze on saplings and prevent the succession to woodland. Now, endangered marine species can be protected by marine conservation areas. In marine conservation areas, tourism, fishing and extraction of oil and gas are controlled. Movement of ships through these areas can also be restricted. Okay, now ex situ conservation takes place outside of an organism's natural habitat. A good example are captive breeding programs that take place in zoos. Now, because of the relatively small number of organisms in a zoo, inbreeding can be a problem. So, to reduce this, animals can be moved between zoos to breed, and zoos keep detailed family trees so that closely related animals are not mated. Now, in many cases, animals produced by captive breeding are reintroduced back into the wild. However, this may not be possible, for example, if the habitat has been reduced or destroyed. In some cases, a new disease may be present in their habitat, which could prevent their reintroduction. Okay, now ex situ conservation methods can also be applied to plants. For example, rare plant species can be cultivated in botanical gardens, and the seeds of rare plants can be stored in seed banks. In a seed bank, dried seeds are kept at cold temperatures to preserve them. Now, this is particularly important in the case of crop plants, which have been produced by selective breeding from wild plants. A good example of this is modern wheat, which is derived from wild grasses bred over thousands of years. As the climate changes, modern wheat may no longer be able to thrive. However, by crossbreeding with its wild relatives, we may be able to introduce beneficial alleles, and these alleles may help the wheat to adjust to climate change. Okay, now conservation efforts are backed by a number of international and local agreements. For example, in the UK, the Countryside Stewardship Scheme was set up to encourage farmers to preserve wildlife and habitats. Many plants and animals are traded between different countries. The Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species was established to regulate this and ensure that it does not threaten the survival of species which are endangered. And finally, the Rio Convention on Biological Diversity was an agreement signed by a large number of countries in 1992. This agreement promotes sustainable development, as well as measures to protect biodiversity. Okay, so hopefully now you can describe the methods of maintaining biodiversity. 